Hello and welcome in the second lecture of Turbulent Boundary Layer course. In this lecture, we will talk about turbulence structure and uh, turbulent boundary layer. Why we study the boundary layer? Because one of the important tasks in engineering fluid mechanics is to predict the drag forces acting on surfaces, pipes, diffusers, turbines, wings of aircraft. So, drag forces are produced by shear stresses, and the shear stresses is caused by fluid viscosity. So, we study the boundary layer to predict how far from the surface the viscosity dominates the flow field. So, I will assume that you know the general concept, but as a quick review, if you have a surface like this, and a fluid flow along the surface in this direction. So what happens is that close to the surface, you have a no-slip condition, which means the fluid stick on the surface. And the farther away you go, you approach the free stream velocity. So when the water is, in this case, hit the edge of the surface, then it is slowly build up of a boundary. This boundary divided the flow into two unequal regions. In the bulk of a fluid region, the viscosity effect can be neglected. This is called the inviscid flow. And the second region is a very thin boundary layer near the wall where the viscosity must be taken into account. Now, for flow over a flat plate, which is very common example, when Reynolds number depend on x, x to the distance from the leading edge, the flow shift from being laminar flow to becoming turbulent flow. So, how this physically done, how the flow change from laminar to turbulent, that's what we will discuss in a few seconds. But I would to mention that the turbulent boundary layer divided into three distinct regions due to the logarithmic law of the wall, which is state that the average velocity of turbulent flow at a certain point uh, within the boundary layer is a proportional to the logarithm of the distance from that point to the wall. So the first one, the first layer is called the viscous sublayer, where fluid dominated by viscous effect. And the second one is the buffer layer, which is a transition region between viscosity dominated region and turbulence dominated part of the flow. And the logarithmic layer where the turbulence dominated and velocity profile varies very slowly. So the concept of turbulent boundary layer is that uh, the free stream kinetic energy is converted into a turbulent fluctuations. So these fluctuations is a self-sustaining process in the presence of a free stream motion. We generate more and more vortices as you can see here. Thus, one of the approaches how these vortices generated and how the flow changed from laminar to turbulence is done by breaking the multiscale turbulent motion into an elementary organized motion that known as eddies or the coherent structure okay to describe the coherent structure for vortices generation we begin with assuming the existence of a spanwise vortex tube in the boundary layer due to molecular motion which is not affecting this stage on the velocity profile but the flow will no longer leave this vortex as it is so it will be uh, the vortex will be pushed or distorts from the middle and the trailing legs of this vortex remain in the near wall region but are stretched and as you know near wall region is a region of flow velocity and the tip of the spanwise vortex will be rise outward to the high velocity region so it serves to pump a fluid away from wall in ejection process and accumulate low speed fluid in a small region this is the cause of high mixing in turbulent flow so once the vortex formed more and more vortices will be generated and this is an approach to how turbulence started some important notes about the subject as we mentioned before, the turbulent boundary region consists of three general layers, the sublayer, buffer, and logarithmic ones. So the sublayer, which is first one adjacent to the wall, it is a low velocity region, but it is not laminar flow. And buffer layer, it is not a transition region. Each one of these layers have a coherent structures and EDs. Also, 
The most turbulence production generated the buffer layer, where ejection of low-speed velocity uh, fluids and sweep of high-speed fluids occur throughout this layer. That's it. Thanks for your watching.